My name's Eric White. I tell jokes. <laughs> so I go to the bar with my buddy, and he orders a blue moon. If you're too young to be a real person yet, a blue moon is a beer that typically comes with a little orange slice on the rim of the glass. But when my friend got his drink, he took it and he just threw it away. And I was like, you know I would have eaten that right. You don't have to throw away food. And he goes, no. No, man. We're in public. Yeah. What does that mean to you exactly? And he says, you know, the oranges are for the girls. The men don't eat the fruit. I was like, uh, why? And he was all shoulders. He's like, I, I don't know. It's like, who told you that? And he goes, my dad told me that. He told me that a long time ago, and I'm surprised you didn't know that. It's like, your dad's stupid, man. He told me he dunked on Michael Jordan. That dude's bullshit. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Don't take that advice. That's bad advice. Men are really weird. I would know. This is because we live in a society that purports that men cannot experience emotions, vulnerability, or sensitivity. And the possession of any combination of these three things could qualify you to have your man card confiscated, which I hear is the worst possible thing that could happen. It's worse than death. Our macho culture is so intense, in fact, that the fear of not being man enough impacts facets of the self that one might not even be aware of. But no one explains what being man enough means, and so we fuck it up every time, and it leads to horrible conclusions. An example, I'll give you one. I used to be obsessed with The Rescuers. Do you remember them? It was an animated film. Rescuers? Okay. Animated film about these mice. And uh, I used to pretend to be Penny, the girl from the movie. And I would run around my grandparents' house with my invisible mice, saving invisible people from imaginary peril. peril. And I didn't even do drugs yet. I was just fucking weird. <laughs> but my grandpa put an end to that real fast and he told my parents get ready we're from Tennessee he told my parents that I shouldn't pretend to be a girl because it might turn me gay these were words that came out of his mouth never mind the fact that I used to hold full conversations with invisible mice that only I could see and we used to hold parades for the millions of people that we used to save and we'd march out and we'd shake hands with them hey how you doing that was all totally normal shit for children to do <laughs> But if you act like a girl, people go into like crisis management mode and it's like, we have to stop this while we can before it spreads too fast. We're going to have to take his man card. It's worse than death. It's weird, man. The lack of emotional intelligence in our society and men is just overwhelming. And it leads to serious communications issues that hinder one's ability to cultivate meaningful, lasting relationships. So when tragedy strikes, a lot of men find themselves woefully unprepared to handle the situation. My brother committed suicide about two years ago. When I got the phone call, I had just gotten home from class. My uh, fiance, Rebecca, had beat me home, and she was cooking dinner already. I answered the phone, it was my dad. And he said, are you sitting down? It's usually not a good sign. So I waved Rebecca over, and I put the phone on speaker, he came back on and said, Eric, Peyton is dead. My mom came over the phone and said, your brother killed himself. A wave of emotions, some of which I'd never felt before, washed over me. and My blood was hot with anger and confusion, but I didn't know what to do. I froze. I had never experienced something like that before, and I didn't know what being a man in that situation looked like. I didn't talk about my brother for weeks after that incident. And during that time, I went to a conference, or a, a celebration rather, at Mesa Community College, in which I was to win Student of the Year. But I didn't care. I remember sitting in the auditorium, finely dressed, with students packed wall to wall. And I remember thinking, in the middle of that room, that I'd never felt so alone in my life, because I had no idea how to open up and ask for help. It was my fiance, Rebecca, that saved me. Every day she would ask me, how are you doing? Do you need to talk? You know I'm here. Until finally one day, we did talk. And I told her, I have no idea how I'm doing. I've never felt like this before. I don't know how to act. And she said, Eric, that's totally okay. 
No one knows how to act in a situation like this. But you have to be able to open up because fragility and vulnerability do not equal weakness. Your inability to open up and ask for help is going to kill you. And so we started the healing process together. I hear people say all the time that women are more emotional than men. Those emotional women. Do you really believe that? Do you know how many men are sitting in prison right now for beating their wife? It sounds like an emotional outburst to me. We just had a male teenager walk into a Florida high school and murder 17 people. Is that not emotion? Man, we have to be able to experience our lives, man. You have to be able to feel what's real and open up and ask for help when you need to. Now, I wish that men and women could walk into a bar and eat whatever the hell they want and not have to worry about your man card getting stolen because the oranges are not for girls. The oranges are for everybody. Thank you.